Okay guys, Gamelot has just released the official patch notes for the upcoming update, so in today's video, as usual, I will make sure to explain you all the new stuff which is about to make its way to the game, including the new cars, features and minor changes. So with nothing else to add, let's dive into it. Alright guys, so the Italian Revolution Season update will drop within a few days on Android and iOS since it's not 100% guaranteed that Windows won't have any kind of delays and it's here with a ton of new cars, so let's begin with them. At first we have the Lamborghini Huracan STO, which honestly kinda looks like the Super Trofeo Evo we have in the class, just that this time will be a low B-class car, which will be available through Legends Pass. If we talk about the stats, it's nothing surprising really, looks like a Kepler motion with great acceleration and handling, but you know, quite mid at everything else. Then we have what it will likely be the new highest rank car in the entire C-class, this is the Ferrari Daytona SP3. Great top speed, which will make this the fastest LE C class car, and nice acceleration, but quite poor handling, which will likely be the biggest drawback of this car. The Nitro is quite okay though, but it will be better than the Panamera, we will see. This car will have its own Grand Prix during the second season of this update. Scrolling down we can see an Asphalt 8 Classic, this time the Pagani Utopia Coupe, with a rank of slightly over 4300 points and a top speed of 367. Look quite promising until I check the acceleration. I mean, it's not really bad, but considering this car won't be an Elite A-class car, I would say it will end up being a decent car for multiplayer with a solid handling and nitro efficiency, but that's pretty much it. This car in particular will be available through the first special event of the second season of this update. And now it seems like Alfa Romeo will have its first appearance in Asphalt 9 with the Alfa Romeo Giulia GTA M, a quite average D-class car that will end up being competition for the Mazda 4i, I guess. It's not a king, not a really bad car overall, but it's, you know, right in the middle. The good thing is that we will be able to lock this car completely for free through a Grand Prix, which, it, which will be available during the first season of this update. And now I promise to you all guys that I'm trying to hype this up with something, but the truth is that aside from the Daytona, I'm not seeing a ton of interesting stuff so far. Now, for example, we can see the ATS Automobili GT, which to me looks like a copy of the E-Class Car Jaguar, whose name is way too long for me to remember, this time with a bit more solid acceleration. I will be honest, my Rima Concept S eats car like this one for breakfast. However, this car has a good thing though, and that is the fact that it will be available through a special hand, just like the Ultima RS. The bad thing this time is that you will need to own the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento and the Lamborghini SC20, so it will be a bit harder to lock this car through its special hand this time, I guess. Getting closer to the end, Gameblog decided to spice some things up, and here we have another car coming directly from Asphalt 9 China, the W Motors like a Neon Edition. A customized version of the iconic car, but this time with way stronger stats, including a top speed of almost 430 km per hour, a quite decent acceleration and an okayish nitro duration which hopefully will be useful with not the best handling this car has. The best thing is that this car will be available as the first special event of this update during the first season. The bad thing however is the fact that in order to get blueprints and epic import parts from this like a neon edition you will have to own the Nobel M600 Speedster as well as the Tushek TS900 Racer Pro which I'm sure will be an obstacle for many players. At last but not least we have the Formula E Gen 2 Asphalt Edition, which I previously mentioned on my previous video and which, as I said, is basically a low C-class car with a quite decent acceleration, but that's it. This car innovates in something and that's the way through it will be introduced into the game. There will be three time-limited events which you will have to play in all of them in order to lock the car. And the first time-limited event will appear during this update, so I would bet that this car will take a few months in order to be fully maxed out, but we will see once it arrives during the second season of this update. Anyways, let's check the new feature, Overclock. Overclock is a temporary boost to a car stats, which can be applied to a specific cars within your garage. Depending on each season, there will be, you know, a determined list of cars available for Overclock. In order to Overclock a car, you will have to collect Overclock chips from Overclock Time Limited Events, where there will be a free try of each one of the new cars included on each season, and you can get some of the chips from shop offers and maybe in the future from other events rewards as well. Once you collect a note of uh, the overclock chips, you can boost your car during a limited period of time, you know, not forever. If we check the other features that will be implemented during this update, we can see that the Gameloft ID 
will be first introduced on Microsoft, Steam and Xbox, where we will have the chance to link or progress from Steam or Microsoft if we mess up something, you know, with the help of customer care. Also, seems like the Android version of the game will get some kind of performance improvements, but now it's time to check the update timeline. During the first season of this update or chapter 1, there will be a ton of time limited events which you can check on the screen right now, as well as a key hunt from the Brabant BT62, a Legends Pass exclusive hunt for the Jaguar XE SB Project 8, damn what a long name though, and then car hunts available for everyone of the TBR Griffith, the Ferrari FXXK and the Arinera Usera 33, which will happen in the order I mentioned them. There is something else you will be happy to hear and is the fact that you will have a chance to lock a different car through the showcase from this update onwards. And that's the Ferrari SF90 Stradale. A really nice car for classic multiplayer and trolling around in general, which I can assure you it's worth a shot. As usual, during this first season we will keep getting Starways, this time featuring the Peugeot Onyx. Okay, so now if we have a look at the Italian Revolution season second chapter, we can see a ton of different time limited events which you can check here, as well as one key hunt for the Arash Falcon edition, a Legends Pass exclusive hunt for the KTM Expo GTX, and then, you know, a few car hunts that everyone will get the chance to play featuring the BMW M4 GTS and the Neo EP9. During this season, we will also get the chance to unlock the Formula Agent through the special TLAs I mentioned earlier, as well as the Aston Martin Valkyrie through a Unleash event, where we will need the new ATS Automobili, as well as the Fran Hivento Sorpasso and the Rares touch on speed in order to, you know, play and get some kinds of rewards. Remember that from this update onwards, there won't be season tokens anymore, so hopefully the special event rewards will be back to featuring normal amounts of tokens, even though I'm not that sure about that, but you know, we will see. That's pretty much all the new things this update will include into Asphalt 9 Legends, but now it's your turn guys. What do you think about all these new events and cards? Will you try to go for any of them or you will just save up for the future? Let me know in the comment section, make sure to subscribe in order to not to miss anything new about Asphalt 9 and I will see you really soon as usual with much more Asphalt 9 content. Goodbye guys!